Hi, Geometry Scholars. We're doing Chapter 10, Lesson 5 today. So far, we've been talking a lot about parts of circles, equidistant lines, arcs, things like that. Today, we're going to talk about finding angle and arc measures and how they relate to each other, as well as what's called circumscribed angles. So that will be new. Again, you'll have to remember what uh, previous vocabulary tangent, chord, and secant. So finding angle and arc measures, if it intersects with a tangent, it's pretty simple. Here it is. If a tangent and a chord intersect at a point, here it's A, on a circle, then the measure of each angle formed is one half the measure of its intercepted arc. So what you should notice here is that angle one, which is the red one, <laughs> intercepts arc AB. And so that means the measure of angle one is half of the measure of arc of AB. Similarly, angle two intercepts the arc BCA, which is a major one. And that's all there is to it. There's an example 33, which is a proof in your book. We're gonna go on to finding angle and arc measures. Line A is a Find the measure of angle 1. In the diagram, line M is tangent to the circle at point B. By the tangent and intersected chord theorem, if a tangent and a chord intersect at a point on the circle, then the measure of each angle form is one half the measure of its intercepted arc. This means the measure of angle 1 is equal to one half the measure of arc AB. In the diagram, the measure of arc AB is 130 degrees. So the measure of angle one is equal to one half times 130 degrees, which equals 65 degrees. Part B, you need to find the measure of arc KJL. In the diagram, line M is tangent to the circle at point L. By the tangent and intersected chord theorem, the 125 degree angle is one half the measure of arc KJL or the measure of arc KJL is equal to two times 125 degrees, which equals 250 degrees. So there is to it. Okay, these are examples we do in our class notes together. We're moving on. Now there's th two ways that um, intersecting lines and circles, sorry, three ways that two lines can intersect in the circle. If two non-parallel lines intersect a circle, there's three places where they can intersect, inside, outside, and exactly on the circle. So here's the three examples, as you can see. Each one will have a different theorem. So 10.15 says, if two chords intersect inside a circle, then the measure of each angle is one half the sum of the measures of the arcs intercepted by the angle in its vertical angle. So you can think of this as averaging, okay? So angle one, you add the red and the blue arc, DC and AB, and you multiply by a half. That's it. Same thing for um, angle two, it'd be the opposite ones. So it'd be half of arc BC plus arc AD. Now that's if it's inside. If it's outside, instead of adding, we're gonna subtract. So if a tangent and a secant, two tangents or two secants intersect outside a circle, which you see there's those three examples, then the measure of the angle formed is one half the difference of the measures of the intercepted arcs. So you do the major arc minus the minor arc that are both intercepted, and it's half of that. So here it's the red minus the blue divided by two, the red minus the blue divided by two, the red minus the blue divided by two. So it doesn't matter if it's a tangent and a secant, two tangents or two secants. It's the same theorem. Average if they're on the inside, subtract if they're on the outside. Here's an example. Find the value of x. Solution. Part A. The chords JL and KM intersect inside the circle. Use the angles inside the circle theorem, which states if two chords intersect inside a circle, then the measure of each angle is one half the sum of the measures of the arcs intercepted by the angle and its vertical angle. 
So by the angles inside the circle theorem, x degrees is equal to 1 half times the quantity, the measure of arc JM plus the measure of arc LK. Substitute 130 degrees for the measure of arc JM and 156 degrees for the measure of arc LK. And this gives you x degrees is equal to 1 half times the quantity, 130 degrees plus 156 degrees. Simplify and x is equal to 143. So the value of x is 143. Part B. The tangent ray CD and the secant ray CB intersect outside the circle. Use the angles outside the circle theorem. By the angles outside the circle theorem, if a tangent and a secant intersect outside a circle, then the measure of the angle formed is one half the difference of the measures of the intercepted arcs. This means the measure of angle BCD is equal to one half times the quantity, the measure of arc AD minus the measure of arc BD. Substitute x degrees for the measure of angle BCD, 178 degrees for the measure of arc AD, and 76 degrees for the measure of arc BD. This gives x degrees is equal to 1 half times the quantity 178 degrees minus 76 degrees. Simplify and x is equal to 51. So the value of x is 51. So again, remember, if they intersect inside the circle, you add and divide by 2. If they intersect outside the circle, subtract and divide by 2. Okay, again, here we are with some examples um, that we'll do under the camera together. And then here we are to circumscribed angle. So this is a core concept in lesson five. A circumscribed angle is an angle whose sides are tangent to a circle. I always think of them as um, if I connected A to C or those two tangent points, it would make a triangle. So circumscribed means the outside of the circle. The, you may have also heard of the word inscribed and that's inside the circle. So circumscribed is outside. Think of the word circumference, outside. Okay, so circumscribed angle. So here we go. This is what the theorem says. The measure of a circumscribed angle is equal to 180 minus the measure of the central angle it intercepts the same arc. So as you can see here, the measure of ACB, that would be my central angle. And so ADB, this one over here, the circumscribed angle, will equal 180 minus the central. There's a proof, it's not too hard. Here we go, we'll just do some examples. Find the value of x. Solution, part A. Use the circumscribed angle theorem to find the measure of angle ADB. The circumscribed angle theorem states that the measure of a circumscribed angle is equal to 180 degrees minus the measure of the central angle that intercepts the same arc. In the diagram, angle ADB is the circumscribed angle and angle ACB is the central angle that intercepts the same arc. So by the circumscribed angle theorem, the measure of angle ADB is equal to 180 degrees minus the measure of angle ACB. Substitute x degrees for the measure of angle ADB and 135 degrees for the measure of angle ACB. And this gives you x degrees is equal to 180 degrees minus 135 degrees. Subtract and x is equal to 45. So the value of x is 45. Solution, part b. Use the measure of an inscribed angle theorem and the circumscribed angle theorem to find the measure of angle EJF. By the measure of an inscribed angle theorem, the measure of angle EJF is equal to 1 half the measure of arc EF. By the definition of a minor arc, the measure of arc EF is equal to the measure of angle EGF. So this gives you the measure of angle EJF is equal to one half the measure of angle EGF. By the circumscribed angle theorem, the measure of angle EGF is equal to 180 degrees minus the measure of angle EHF. So this gives you the measure of angle EJF is equal to one half the quantity 180 degrees minus the measure of angle EHF.
substitute 30 degrees for the measure of angle EHF, and this gives you the measure of angle EJF is equal to one half the quantity 180 degrees minus 30 degrees. In the diagram, the measure of angle EJF is x degrees. Substitute, and x is equal to one half times the quantity 180 minus 30. Simplify, and x is equal to 75. So the value of x is 75. And that's probably the trickiest one we'll get as far as um, all these different steps. Now we're going to show a modeling mathematics. Okay, this is more like a real life example. And I'm going to make a big. Northern lights are bright flashes of colored light between 50 and 200 miles above Earth. A flash occurs 150 miles above Earth at point C. What is the measure of arc BD, the portion of Earth from which the flash is visible? Earth's radius is approximately 4,000 miles. Solution. Step one, understand the problem. You are given the approximate radius of Earth and the distance above Earth that the flash occurs. You need to find the measure of the arc that represents the portion of Earth from which the flash is visible. Step two, make a plan. Use properties of tangents, triangle congruence, and angles outside a circle to find the arc measure. Step three, solve the problem. Because segment CB and segment CD are tangents, segment CB is perpendicular to segment AB, and segment CD is perpendicular to segment AD by the tangent line to circle theorem. Also, segment BC is congruent to segment DC by the external tangent congruence theorem, and segment CA is congruent to segment CA by the reflexive property of congruence. So, triangle ABC is congruent to triangle ADC by the hypotenuse leg congruence theorem. Because corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent, angle BCA is congruent to angle DCA. Solve right triangle CBA to find that the measure of angle BCA is equal to the inverse sine of the quantity 4000 divided by 4150, which is approximately equal to 74 and 5 tenths degrees. So the measure of angle BCD is approximately equal to 2 times 74 and 5 tenths degrees, which equals 149 degrees. By the circumscribed angle theorem, the measure of angle BCD is equal to 180 degrees minus the measure of angle BAD. By the definition of minor arc, the measure of angle BAD is equal to the measure of arc BD. So this gives you the measure of angle BCD is equal to 180 degrees minus the measure of arc BD. Substitute 149 degrees for the measure of angle BCD. Because the value for the measure of angle BCD is an approximation, use the approximation symbol instead of the equal sign. So this gives you 149 degrees is approximately equal to 180 degrees minus the measure of arc BD. Solve for the measure of arc BD and 31 degrees is approximately equal to the measure of arc BD. So the measure of the arc from which the flash is visible is about 31 degrees. Step four, look back. You can use inverse trigonometric ratios to find the measure of angle BAC and the measure of angle DAC. The measure of angle BAC is equal to the inverse cosine of the quantity 4000 divided by 4150 which is approximately equal to 15 and 5 tenths degrees. The measure of angle DAC is equal to the inverse cosine of the quantity 4000 divided by 4150, which is approximately equal to 15 and 5 tenths degrees. So the measure of angle BAD is approximately equal to 15 and 5 tenths degrees plus 15 and 5 tenths degrees, which equals 31 degrees and therefore the measure of arc BD is approximately equal to 31 degrees. That's a big problem, but that's what we're learning, okay? Um, that should be enough to fill out your notes. We'll be doing a few more examples in class. It could get you started with your assignment because here we are on monitoring progress. So that'll be the end of this one and we'll get the rest in class.